So the Diablo 4 team just unveiled a bunch of new details, including the new Season 6 mechanic for the upcoming Vessel of Hatred expansion. And so in today's video, I'm going to be covering 13-ish must-know tips to help you have an optimal start and progression going into the expansion. And with that, diving straight into the first tip, and this is actually regarding the new Season 6 mechanic, and that is that there will be these semi- almost world boss like monsters called realm walkers roaming around all of sanctuary including the new zones but anyhow you'll not only want to consider killing it whenever it actually is flagged as a whisper and it'll likely give you a lot of progression towards that whisper bar for your turn in and aside from that and even more significantly once you kill the realm walker or of course you'll have other players likely ganging up on the realm walker as well once it's dead you'll also want to enter the portal that spawns and within that special dungeon you'll be able to choose different types of dungeons to kind of target different types of rewards and at the end of each you actually get these special elixirs that will give you a pretty good chunk of exp bonus so you definitely want to keep these elixirs up and constantly have these to be able to not only gain your experience buff and by the way these experience buffs actually stack with other sources of exp bonuses right like your regular elixirs so you definitely want it not only for that but also for the various item drop bonuses that these new elixirs provide and as if that wasn't even enough these elixirs are also going to be one of the only ways that you'll be gaining the new reputation with the new season 6 faction the zakarun remnants and if the previous seasons were any indication gaining reputation through the seasonal reputation track will often give you very useful rewards not only in terms of equipment but in vessel of hatred there will be new items like runes and resources are going to be really important as well especially since there's going to be some new crafting systems that involve materials as well and on to tip number two there will be a new tier difficulty system in vessel of hatred and essentially aside from the pit where there will still be like levels of the pit that you can choose all other forms of content the difficulty of those are essentially tied to whichever difficulty you select for your game and when you're first starting out you generally want to probably start out with expert difficulty there's also the option to select penitent even like at level one but penitent according to the devs and other players in theory at least seems to probably be way too difficult unless you're playing like an alt and already have lots of like legendary aspects unlocked and tempering unlocked and so on and so forth but likely when you're first starting out vessel of hatred in season six you wouldn't want to start with penitent but would want to start with probably expert now in order to potentially get into penitent you would want to of course gear up you want to temper your items accordingly you want to have legendary aspects that sort of synergize together to make a working and powerful build and also probably unlock your class mechanic so with all those combined there is a chance that you'll be able to level up uh, through penitent but i don't imagine most players will be able to do that until say well into like level 40 or even 50 when they have a lot of pieces of their build together and speaking of tempering tips in previous seasons tempering have been a huge source of power when leveling up and also fairly accessible too although you do have to sort of remember applying your tempering to like whenever you upgrade a piece of gear right but some of the best affixes to temper are say weapon affixes such as like double casting or core skill lots of offensive affixes often have really high percentage rolls which can be really powerful too and of course going into a new difficulty you'll want more armor and resistances too right on your more defensive pieces oh and on your weapon the procs which are the chance to deal x amount of elemental damage those have traditionally been pretty good for leveling as well i believe they were quite strong on the ptr but i suppose we'll have to see in season six but there's a high chance that those would be quite good for leveling up too and now for some of the generally best and fastest ways to level up and progress in vessel of hatred first of all strongholds are going to be really good for that the devs have said that each stronghold that you do for the first time will give you over one level's worth of experience and not only that but each first clear will also give you a guaranteed or some guaranteed perhaps uh, magic runes and the runes that i'm referring to are of course the ones that you'll be socketing into gear to make rune words right and not only that but they'll likely also contribute to the new renown in nahantu 
the zone wide reputation system basically so you'll be getting your perks from that too now after you do a lot of your strongholds or if you choose not to do strongholds for whatever reason there's still other viable ways to level up for example if you're done with a lot of strongholds you can then move on to say hell tides plus whispers is generally going to be a good combo and say the hellborn drops have actually been buffed uh, for vessel of hatred so that'll probably be a good way to not only level up but also get some gear too and just get lots of like legendary aspects from opening the Helltide chest, right? Uh, Nightmare Dungeons are also going to be a thing while you're leveling up. They're no longer gated at like a higher level and instead of giving you glyph experience, they're going to give you master working material. So that's always going to be pretty much useful even if you start doing Nightmare Dungeons at an earlier level, right? And plus you might want to do some of these specific dungeons for specific legendary aspects that are useful for your build anyhow. And for some bonus tips for leveling up and doing different types of activities, there is a new party finder in Vessel Hatred that you can definitely try to use when, say, grouping up for whatever types of content you're targeting, right? And of course, we'll throw in the Realm Walkers that I mentioned before as well, right? You'd want to definitely make sure to be doing those too for, of course, like the new Elixir. And the devs have also said that there will be like a new type of Legion event in the Hantu but we're not really sure how good that will be yet. But there's a chance that those will be tuned, perhaps alongside the old Legion events quite well, or give you some interesting and viable rewards while leveling up too. And with that, onto our next tip, the pits have sort of swap rules with Nightmare Dungeons. Whereas again, previously the pit was giving you master working materials, but now they'll be giving you glyph experience. And by the way, the pit can be unlocked at level 60, and also, by the way, once you are able to clear pit level 20, you'll unlock Torment 1, after which is your true end game, pretty much, right? So that would be kind of a main goal uh, to progress towards at the start, is to unlock Torment 1 by completing pit level 20, because after Torment 1, that pretty much opens up the game to monsters being able to drop any type of end game reward for you, right? Of course, when you progress into Torment 2 and above, the difficulty increases, and the drops also get more frequent but at torment one you will already be able to basically have anything that is possible to drop at the end game drop for you now back to the pit glyph leveling is of course going to be pretty important and once you are at level 60 and have all of your skill points you can start doing the pit to not only get your glyphs to drop to then stock it into your paragon board but also level up your glyphs, right? And the way to level up glyphs has been changed as well. It's more similar to the legendary gem system in Diablo 3, where you either have like a guaranteed chance to upgrade a glyph if your pit level is at least 10 levels above that glyph's level. And by the way, if the pit level is over 20 levels above a glyph's level, for every 20 levels that it exceeds the glyph level by, you actually can gain bonus levels on that glyph, which is a way for like, higher end players who have already gone to later pit levels to be able to catch up their like low level glyphs, right? But essentially at level 60, this is definitely something that you want to do alongside gearing. Now really quick onto Infernal Hordes. This was a premier activity and probably like the most efficient activity in terms of not only leveling up, but like gearing and getting master working materials. Pretty much like a lot of things in Season 5, you can pretty much just spam Infernal Horde for. But in Season 6, this will no longer really be possible because you can no longer craft keys to open the Infernal Hordes. But rather, these are going to be drops that you get, right? So that'll definitely really limit the number of times that you can like just run the Infernal Hordes. But the rewards are still going to be really good, right? Arguably, they're going to be perhaps better than before. So once you do get a key to drop, you want to definitely want to prioritize doing that as well for kind of a nice change of pace too, right? You can get greater affix legendaries from there and also a fair chunk of master working materials. But now after you open up the gear chest and there's only going to be one uh, main gear chest now, you'll either be choosing between spending all the rest of your cinders on gold or materials. And next, in Vessel Hatred, the boss ladder is still very much going to be a thing even for the new Spiritborn class. If you need any sort of uniques or want to farm for better roles on your uniques for any specific build. Now one change to the boss ladder in Vessel Hatred is that you'll just need the base boss materials like again your Living Steel, 
your malignant hearts and whatnot to summon your bosses. And there's no longer a choice between summoning like the tormented, stronger version using Stygian stones because the difficulty of the boss and their drops will now be tied to the torment level that you're on, right? So of course, torment one will allow them to drop any of the items that are on the loot table, but torment two and above will just allow them to drop more items, right? With a trade-off of them, of course, being more difficult. And next, and I think this is also another change in the expansion, and that's that Duriel and Andario specifically though, although they don't guarantee a mythic item drop, but their chance to drop a mythic item is actually twice as high as other bosses. And now moving on, the Kuros Undercity is a new activity that can not only be used for leveling up apparently, but primarily serves as a way to target farm specific types of items. So the way this will work is, it's basically a timed dungeon where you want to of course move really fast throughout the map, but also be able to kill things efficiently enough to fill the bar before your timer runs out. And there are different tiers to that bar, with you having to hit at least the first tier or the first rung of that bar to be able to get any rewards at the end. And before you start the dungeon, you can actually like put in certain sort of keys or items to make the dungeon more difficult, but also be able to target farm again different types of items or even like target higher EXP or things like ancestral legendaries or uniques or even runes. And you can even target even more specific items by, for example, putting in like 50 million gold or whatever the cost is or specific types of materials. And again, materials are going to be seeing a lot more use in Vessel of Hatred, and I'll touch on that a bit more later on. But by offering these tributes, you can actually specify the target farming item even more. For example, you can get like amulets with passive skill bonuses, which is like an extremely rare drop, and yet is one of the most useful and powerful items in any build. So I would say the Undercity serves as kind of a high-end way to occasionally do, once you've accrued a certain amount of resources to then target hyper specific and really powerful items. And with that, on to resources, which are like your iron chunks and various types of like salvage materials. You will be getting somewhat more of that in Vessel of Hatred because once you hit Torment difficulty, all rares and magic items, so your yellow and blue gear, will automatically be salvaged. So you won't even see them drop, and in fact, we'll just be able to pick up like whatever materials that they get broken down into but there's also an increased cost or different types of uses of these materials for things like a new blacksmith cache that you can actually use a bunch of materials to craft, which will give you a chance at like certain legendaries and even uniques and even mythic uniques. And then of course you'll need resources for like the Undercity, the aforementioned Undercity target farming. And even, I didn't really mention this before, but for the Realm Walker portals, which is again the season six mechanic, the Realm Walker portal dungeons, whenever you're picking a different type of sort of specialty or different type of item drop dungeon within that portal, you also need to spend like a tribute of certain types of resources as well, apparently. So there's just more reason to use various resources in Vessel of Hatred and something to definitely sort of keep in mind and pay attention to. And not only that, but like runes is of course gonna be a thing, right? And runes are not only gonna be used for like your power, right? Um, you can socket that into your items to trigger certain effects, get like a power boost, of course. Um, but besides that, you can even use certain runes for mythic, unique, targeted crafting now. So in Vestal Hatred, you can now craft a random mythic unique using just two resplendent sparks. And you'll likely be able to earn those from, again, like your first, I think, Uber Lilith kill or whatever they make it to be in Vestal Hatred, plus probably completing the uh, renown track or the reputation track for the new faction and with that you'll be able to craft a random mythic unique but once you combine that with certain types of runes you can then craft specific mythic uniques with the right runes right so the types of runes that you pick up or rather if you're targeting specific mythic uniques it's also really good to know which specific runes that you want to be looking for if you want to go ahead and craft that mythic unique right and thus because runes are tradable, this is something that you might want to watch out for as well on say like trading sites and whatnot, right? And I actually link a trading uh, website guide in the description box below that is also fairly easy to use and I've used to some success before. Now for another new Vessel of Hatred exclusive feature, we have of course the mercenary system. And these are going to be pretty instrumental to 
your power level because not only can you have a merc with you at all times as a solo player plus like a reinforcement skill which is like a skill from another merc not your active one that you have like roaming around but you can actually pick a second merc skill to bind to one of your skills to then be able to activate that as well so that's what you can get as like a solo player or playing solo and when you're in group you get access to that reinforcement skill and lose like your uh, active merc right but it'll be good to also know what each one roughly does and how they can complement and best help you and also perhaps shore up what you most need at that moment, right? So for example, the first mercenary, Rahir, is of course very defensive. He'll be able to knock enemies down and give you like damage reduction or even damage reduction to a group. The Varyana, which is like the barbarian type merc, will actually give you stacking movement speed so if you're doing like speed farming or if you're really strong that'll be a great choice and it also comes with like a guaranteed overpower mechanic so if you have like overpower type builds or you just want like a boost of damage from that that'll be really strong as well and next for the merc subo this is probably one of the most versatile and like good all-around mercs because it can actually help you get more like materials by revealing like monsters and resource nodes around your map and it also helps with things like cooldown reduction, utility, like crowd control duration, and like resource generation too. And last but not least, and probably the most complicated one, we have Altkin, which is like a demon boy. Uh, it actually transforms into a demon periodically, and there's like two types of demons. But essentially, it actually also debuffs you in some way. For example, if you do like the fire spec, it will actually like cause you yourself to get burned as well. But the offensive capabilities of it not only the merc itself, but also like the buff to damage that it gives you. For example, it can like on demand makes make enemies vulnerable or like give you resource generation and other things uh, might be worth using despite like the negative parts of the merc affecting you. And now the other massive expansion system that we haven't really talked about yet is of course runes and rune words. I've kind of mentioned some ways to get some runes starting out. Uh, the first of which is strongholds. You basically get a first time reward when clearing the stronghold but those apply to magic quality runes only and after doing strongholds you'll also be able to get guaranteed runes from boss encounters throughout the vessel of hatred campaign which you're required to do anyway you can't just skip it you'll also be able to get guaranteed ones from whisper caches and world bosses so these are just a few reasons to do all of these aforementioned activities. Again, if you actually need the runes. And again, they're important not only for like character power to use as socketables, um, but also for certain types of crafting, right? Namely like your mythic unique crafting and other things too. Now in terms of some of the best starting runes or good all around runes, there's like the plus skill one, which is I think Vex. Um, that's more of a higher end one. Some of the ones that were the best and overpowered, frankly, on the PTR were severely nerfed. One of them being like the Druid's Petrify rune and the other being the Barbarian Warcry one. So those are no longer going to be like the best of the best, although they're still probably viable in some ways. For example, the Petrify one, now instead of giving you critical strike damage, now still crowd controls enemies and gives you resource, right? So if you need resource, that might be a good option too. The Warcry one will no longer give you Berserking. If you're playing that actual class, the Barber of Druid, you can still benefit from like the enhanced versions of those skills. But if you're not those classes, you'll just get like the basic versions. But after the PTR and with the latest update, they did buff some of the underperforming runes, namely like some of the other ones that cast damaging skills, like the Meteor ones, some of the Spiritborn skills, um, the Rogue's Smoke Grenade, the Druid's Summoning Wolf, just to name some of the examples. So those ones that have had their damage massively increased could actually serve as pretty good starting uh, options for runes, especially when you're leveling up. Now, finally, and last but not least, for my final tip of this video, and that is to finish the Dark Citadel raid, or I don't know if they're calling a raid, but it pretty much is a raid. But basically you wanna finish the Dark Citadel before November 8th to get a new, free awesome looking mount called the reigns of the long fur beast so get together with some friends while you technically need two players at minimum the difficulty doesn't actually scale based on the number of players so it would be actually more ideal to get up to four players to be able to clear it and later on once the raid is really underway i'll be sure to release some video guides covering the dark citadel as well so definitely stay tuned and consider subscribing to my channel for that and with that those are actually a lot more than 13 tips 
for having a fun and optimal Vessel Hatred and Season 6 start. Let me know what you think in the comment section below and whether you have any tips to add. And I'll definitely reply to all of the comments on this video. And with that, thank you so much for watching. Consider subscribing to my channel for more cutting edge videos just like this one. And I will catch you in the next video. Peace.